Well, today we continue in Revelation. Um, we have looked at Jesus Christ's introduction through John that he gave us. Um, we have noted that this is the revelation of Jesus that he gave John, and John has provided it to the church. Uh, we also looked at the seven churches, and we noted how they represent all the churches. And throughout history, those situations in the churches have been there. We, by looking at those churches, we also looked at the warnings to them and the rewards that were promised. And we have committed in this church that we don't want to be warned by Jesus Christ. We want to be like the church at Philadelphia. The only church that didn't have something negative said about its walk with the Lord. And then uh, we looked at the scroll. Then we looked at, I'm sorry, we looked at John being raptured at that moment to represent what's going to happen to the church. And we saw John weeping in the scriptures because God on the throne held a scroll that had seven seals, you remember, and nobody was found that could open it except for the Lamb of God. And he opened each of those seals. And we looked at the what came upon the world as each of those seals was opened. So today we are at the point in Revelation where we're going to be looking at some trumpets, seven of them as a matter of fact. I want to draw a distinction as we begin between these trumpets and the, the last trumpet or the trumpet of God that Paul speaks about in 1 Corinthians when he talks about the, the rapture taking place. You know, we, we know from Scripture there's two things that we're going to hear when Jesus comes back for His church if we're still alive. One of those things we're going to hear is a shout. The other thing we're going to hear is a loud trumpet. And we have even listened to recordings that this past month in January we listened to the recordings that people have made all over the world of trumpet sounds in the air. They can't figure out where they're coming from. I want to draw a distinction between that trumpet when Jesus comes and these seven trumpets. The, the, often the, the trumpet when Jesus comes, Paul called it the last trumpet. Now, Revelation had not been written yet. The seven trumpets had not been revealed by Jesus Christ to John. So when Paul wrote that, he didn't have the, the uh, access to know about these seven. What, what Paul was talking about is that in the church age, there are various uh, times that uh, convocations have been called and uh, trumpets might have been needed. Uh, but right before Jesus comes, in the church age, the very last trumpet will blow. And that those trumpets at that time will announce the rapture. And then there won't be any more trumpets for the calling together of the church after that. We will be in heaven with Christ for seven years, then we'll come back down to the earth and we'll reign with him for a thousand years. So there is a difference between the trumpets. But these trumpets in Revelation 8, each trumpet is announcing something that is coming upon the world. And John is, is seeing things that are going to happen in the tribulation. And he's, uh, he is seeing uh, acts of God on this earth in order to try to bring people, not only um, take vengeance on those that have uh, been killing believers, but he's also trying to bring the earth to repentance, especially the Jews at that time. They have an opportunity to come back to him. So in Revelation 8, 
we are going to see uh, where a third of what is our earth is destroyed. And we're going to see which parts of it are destroyed. So we're going to start looking at these uh, four trumpets, the first four. And we'll notice what happens when they blow. When the first trumpet is blown, all vegetation, a third of that vegetation, will be destroyed by hail, by fire, by blood that is thrown to the earth. These are actions that God is taking against this, uh, the people on the earth at that time. We will not be here. We know that. If we're in the grave, we will have been resurrected. If we're alive, we will have been raptured. And we will be with Christ when all this happens. So um, we're actually studying this to understand what's going to happen during the tribulation. And I believe it should motivate us to talk to people about God and about Christ. Time is short. And I'll remind us again, anyone that dies now and is not a believer... They go into what I call the, the group of the unjust who have died. And they remain there. They remain there during the tribulation. They remain there through the thousand year reign. They are only resurrected at the great white throne at the end of time. And they are resurrected to be sentenced. They've already been judged. So it's really important that we share the gospel. It just, it, it just makes my heart leap when I hear different ones of you say, well, I was in a bathroom and I dropped off one of our traps. I was, I was in a restaurant and I dropped one of them off. Or I was talking to somebody and I gave them one. That's great. Or I went to my neighbor and I handed them one. Or I went to a family member and I gave them one. We are calling people's attention to the fact that we are in the last days. And we are asking them to consider their eternal destiny. What a great thing that God has called us to do as a church. Well, a third of vegetation is destroyed with the first trumpet. When the second trumpet blows, something that appears to be like a burning mountain comes down and goes into the oceans into the seas. Um, there are two things that uh, Bible scholars have said that could be. It could be an asteroid or it could be a nuclear explosion. Now we have the capability of, of nuclear weapons coming in from the atmosphere. They can be put on an intercontinental ballistic missile today and, and they, can, they can come in and come down into different areas. This destroys a third of what is in the seas. Then the third trumpet blows. And this time, it's not the seas, but it's the fresh water that is contaminated and destroyed. A third of it. Uh, it's described as a burning star. In Zechariah 14.2, if you want to write that scripture down, it would be an interesting scripture to read when you, when you go back home. Zechariah 14.2. It describes what is, is also talked about in Revelation. So we have Old Testament descriptions that, and New Testament descriptions, and they parallel each other. Which confirms even more that it is going to happen. And then finally, when the fourth trumpet blows, there's going to be um, changes in the heavens, changes in the atmosphere, changes uh, that would affect light and the sun and the moon at that time. And uh, people will become afraid of what's happening. Uh, and especially if they're not believers. Because during the, the tribulation, we've already brought this out, there are people who will have a chance to accept Jesus. 
during the tribulation. Uh, and and they, they will have a hard time during that tribulation, we know. But these first four trumpets destroy a third of these areas of the world. Then in Revelation 9, we see three more trumpets, and with each of these is a woe that is spoken on the earth. So I want us to understand that as, time, as, as this time goes by, these things that are happening get worse and worse and harder and harder. Okay? And so we will see this as we look at these three woes. The first woe uh, is uh, when the fifth trumpet blows is are described as locusts and they come from the bottomless pit. There's actually a key that is used to unlock what is called the bottomless pit. And in that pit are demons and demon angels. And they've been kept there. Um, if they would have been released earlier, this world probably wouldn't have lasted as long as it has. But they are going to be released during the tribulation. And they're, they have one focus, and that's to go and to torment mankind. Torment mankind. Um, this is what I've called the demon prison at the center of the earth that's opened up. Now, even though they're allowed to torment, they're told they're not allowed to kill. This goes on for five months, we're told. Five months. And if you read the description of them, their ability to uh, basically sting or to bring pain or to uh, bring torment on people, uh, that's their entire focus during the, when this uh, trumpet is sounded. They have a king. Um, this king... Uh, the name of this king is destruction in English. That's what it's called. That's his intent, is to destroy and to, kill, uh, to uh, try to kill people even though they're not allowed to. Now the 144,000 that we came across in a previous message, these we're told that they're protected and that, um, that also the tribulation saints are protected during that time. So it's just the unbelievers on the earth who don't believe in God, the worshipers of a cult, the worshiper of Antichrist. It's just those who are attacked when the fifth trumpet goes on. When the sixth trumpet sounds, we are told that four angels that have been kept in reserve, if you want to think of it that way, four angels are released uh, from the Euphrates River area, and these are evil angels. And these four angels, they lead a demonic army. Now, there's a lot of discussion about who these 200 million uh, people are, or beings are, in that army. 200 million, led by these four angels. Uh, I have, that's, and that's just my conclusion from my studies, uh, so you can read where some people think these are the Chinese who, as a huge army, uh, come across into the Middle East. But I believe that because these are de demonic angels, and I believe that because the bottomless pit was open, that these are demonic spirits, 200 million of them who come at uh, mankind. Um, and God, at the same time, uh, rains down fire and brimstone and smoke as plagues on the earth while these 200 million are coming against mankind and a third of the population is killed at that time. Now, a third... Um, and these may be old figures, but from, from what I understand, a third of the population 
would be about one and a half billion. Now think about one and a half billion people during the tribulation. Um, then we take a little bit of a uh, uh, the trumpets stop sounding and we take a little bit of a reprieve, just a little bit of time and we see something else that, that happens in between the sixth and seventh trumpet. And this is a little book in Revelation 10 that Jesus Christ shows John. And this little book um, is announced by a mighty angel. I'm not sure whether it would be Gabriel or Michael, but it's, it's, it's a mighty angel who makes the announcement that all authority has been now given and, and is in the hands of God and Jesus Christ over the earth and over the nations and announces that there will be no more delay with, with what is going to come on the earth when that seven trumpet, seventh trumpet sounds. This will be uh, what I've noted here as the resolution or the finishing of all things. So when that seven trumpet, seventh trumpet sounds, it will begin the finishing of all things. And then a very interesting thing happens with that little book. John is told to eat that book. Mm -hmm. So it makes you ask the question, it made me ask the question, what is this book? What, what does it mean he eats it? And if you're, if, and I know you've read these scriptures, but when he first eats it, it has a very sweet taste in his mouth. But as he swallows it and begins to digest it, it becomes bitter. So whatever this is, is, is good at first, and then it becomes bitter. Well, I want to propose to you that, that, that this, little bee, this little book is the prophecy or the remaining history that is being uh, described along with the truth about Jesus Christ. And John is told to speak, to prophesy, um, as he eats the book. And I believe that that is not only the scripture that we have, but it's also what John was, what was being revealed to, to him. Now John wants to write it down, because he's writing everything else down. He wants to write down what he heard and what he saw in that book, and he's told no. This is, as far as what I could find, this is the only part of Jesus' revelation to John that John was told, do not uh, write this. Do not make it where people know what this is. And so God is, is holding that back. After uh, this happens, the last uh, trumpet sounds, but... Um, before that, two witnesses appear on earth. Two witnesses. There's a lot of discussion about who the two witnesses are. The purpose of these two witnesses is to preach the truth, to preach the gospel. And they are, they are uh, sent from, from God, and they are men who are on this earth. Um, Part of the, the thought about these two witnesses is that it's appointed that the man wants to die and then the judgment. So these two witnesses must be two men who've not died in history. Yeah. And that's, that's one way of looking at it. And there's only two that didn't die, that were actually taken instead of going through death. One was Enoch, and the other was Elijah. And so there is a teaching that God must send them back down as these two witnesses. However, when you look at what they preach, one of them is preaching similar to Moses and, and, and the law of Moses and about God's how God dealt with them the Israelites and how Jesus fulfills the law. So in fact, it could be Elijah and Moses. So I'm not taking a position on, on the two. 
But I, we do know clearly why they're coming, and they're coming to preach to the world. We're told that uh, they cause a lot of problems when they preach, because the world doesn't want to hear what they're preaching. The world doesn't want to hear what Jesus did. The world doesn't want to hear about God. And so they try to resist these two men. And we're told in the scripture here in Revelation that anybody that tries to come against them, they literally, these two men, can call fire down from heaven on whoever comes against them. They, they do this for about three and a half years. Then the Antichrist, and God allows this now, the Antichrist uh, decides that he's going to kill them and they're going to die. And that's what happens. And it says the whole world sees this. Because what happens is when they die, they don't bury them. They take them and they let them lay in the street for three and a half days, dead. And, and we're told that the entire world sees this. How could that have happened? John wrote this in 95 A.D., somewhere in that neighborhood. There, there was no way for the whole world to see it happen. Today, the whole world can see anything happen. With all of our 24-7 newscasts and all of our cameras. So I, I envision it being broadcast Here's their dead. We're told that the world celebrates their death, even to the point of exchanging gifts as if, you know, it's some kind of uh, holiday or some kind of something to celebrate because they're so glad to get rid of these two guys. And guess what? The cameras catch in three and a half days. Wouldn't you know, God raises them up. They come back to life. And then while the entire world watches, they go to be with God. What, a, what a, an event that will be for the world at that time. Then the seventh trumpet, the last trumpet, happens. And the kingdom is proclaimed. The, the kingdom of God is, is proclaimed with that last trumpet. And the temple of God, we're told, is opened in the heavens. And, and John saw that. And this is, this is when uh, Christ comes and begins to establish the millennium kingdom. <coughs> now, one last point this morning. As we're looking at these seven different things that come along. Uh, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls, the various things we look at. Um, we have to keep in mind that Revelation is not where you start here in chapter 1 and you go to the end of the book and everything we're looking at follows in chronological order. Just remember that we're going through the seven seals and the seven trumpets. And then we're going to look at that same period of time, next, starting next week, and we're going to look at people and events that happen. So we're, we're, we're going to look at the beast, and we're going to look at the harlot, and we're, we're going to look at what we just now looked at, but we're going to look at it from a different perspective. And we've got to understand that Revelation does that. They repeat, John, uh, Jesus gave John different things, but in the same time period. So we'll, we'll catch that next week. But these trumpets are bringing the wrath of God on this earth. And we should be thankful we're not going to be here. But because we know what's going to happen, we should be talking to people about their souls. Yes. So the seventh trumpet is where God comes and destroys everybody, or they go, um, and then the thousand year reign begins? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we'll, a little bit later in Revelation, we're going to get into 
when Jesus Christ comes back, there's actually a time there where he judges. There are the sheep and the goats. And the sheep and the goats are those um, that he is going to pronounce a judgment upon as he comes back. Um, and we know that the sheep will come into the millennium. But we also know that the goats are going to uh, not come in. They, they will die. He will send them into eternal torment along with those of the unjust. So we just have to sort of catch when these, when these events take place and how they line up with what we've already looked at in Ezekiel and Daniel and some of our other scriptures. But the actual end of everything does not happen until the millennial kingdom ends and the great white throne judgment is, is in place. At that time, th that's when the new heaven and the new earth come and, and things will be uh, done away with here, this earth and all that, that we know. And, uh, and then that's eternity at that point. And we, we'll get to some of that as we move on, but you, thank you for asking your question. Uh, this is not the time when everyone uh, dies because we know that there will be people that come from the tribulation into the millennium. They will be alive. They will have children. Uh, they will give birth. Uh, people will live for 900 and 1,000 years, we know. Um, we know that during that time, people will be able to either accept Jesus Christ that they can literally see in Jerusalem or they can reject Him. We know that if they reject Him, they'll die. We're told that. But if they accept Him, they'll, they'll live out the millennium. So we'll go, we'll go back through some of that as we move on through Revelation. Okay. So um, God bless your, your week and your uh, reflection on what we just looked at. The whole point of the seven trumpets is it's God's initiating real wrath on this earth and, uh, and trying to bring people to their senses and also trying to avenge what, what others have done against believers. And, and there's actually believers killed during that time because of their faith. So um, God bless your week and we'll, we'll pick up from there next week.